All right. So it's now officially the start of our new student orientation for our, our next term start date on Monday, January 1st, 2018. Thank you all for joining us today. Um, today we're presenting a, 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 some great, uh, great, great presentation on how to log in, how to log in, how to post in your course, and some great detail, details and support to help you get started successfully here at CIU. And thank you for taking time out of your day to attend this presentation. I know holidays are coming up, and we're very excited to have you come aboard and start your program at CIU for those returning, those starting, and those who um, are inquiring a little bit more information. So uh, thanks again. Uh, we're gonna go and on with our next slide. And again, please use the chat box for any questions. I can answer those live as well, and we'll have during portions for a Q&A. Let's get started. First question we ask everybody is, are we ready? The answer is, I hope, will be yes after this presentation. So a little bit about CIU. This is our mission statement. Uh, California and Accounts University, we offer a relevant, in-demand, accredited online program to enhance each student's professional career. We're committed to equipped, equip the next generation of business professionals, leaders, and entrepreneurs with the confidence, qualifications, and competence to succeed in the global business community and economy. That is our mission statement. And these are our mission pillars. Uh, we are personal, accessible, and uh, our entrepreneurial spirit. Our support is service-oriented culture amongst our departments, students, faculty, and alumni. Our accessible support is sustainable, global, affordable, and online. Our entrepreneurial spirit support is independent, evolving, driven, and relevant. And our personal tone is supportive and encouraging. Our accessible tone is practical and straightforward. And our entrepreneurial spirit is, is, tone is aspirational and challenging. So those are our CIU mission pillars. Today's presentation, we're going to start off with a tutorial. It's going to be about 20 minutes um, directly showing how to log in and, and post your assignments, um, including a student portal, the Learn Center, course room, and e-textbook. In the set section, we'll be discussing technology requirements, how to identify a study space, uh, registration, and then go, attendance, the intelligent partnership, assistance and support, study partner, and ID card. That, that will be presenting today uh, as well. Okay, let's move forward. Before we get started with, the ori with our tutorial, just one last call. Is there any questions before we get started? Everybody okay? Anybody who just joined us want to introduce themselves now? Okay, to speak up, now's the time. All right, let's continue with the tutorial. Please use the chat box if you have any questions. All right, so the screenshot you're seeing is the student portal, the login, uh, the student portal login screen. Um, so this is what you have access to uh, right now uh, if you have been enrolled here at CIU. Uh, the same link where you complete your application. So once you've completed the new student onboarding process, uh, you will have access to your, to your portal uh, as well. You can see your application and see um, your administrative headquarters. Um, this is also another way you can log in into your courses. Now, if you ever forget your password or need help logging in, you can select forgot your password here on the login screen. Um, you can have an e email help this at countuniversity.edu or contact your advisor for a password reset. So that goes for any login credentials any, or any login screen. Always contact us if you can't have any issues logging in. So let's... Oh, Mecca, great. You lost your sound for a second, but you're still here. No problem. Glad you can make it. And if you have any audio or, or visual issues, just go ahead and if you can speak up, we are recording this. So. <laughs> Let's start with the tutorial. I'm going to briefly minimize this. I'm going to go to one of my login screens. So let's go first to the portal, what I just mentioned. So this is what you have access to now um, as well, the student portal. When you create an application, you've gotten a portal account created. So it has a calendar, a news center, a message center, advisor center, and a document center. And a couple of things it also will have as well as your profile, where you can change your password with the message center. Oops, let me go back. Academics, you have a degree audit and grades. You can always check your official grades under academics. 
always check your degree audit. That's where all of your uh, courses are being inputted. Finances, you can make a payment online or even update your information for accounts. You're going to see documents here, and there are external links as well. You can log into the Learn Center from this uh, portal as well. But what I want to show you today is actually a couple things. It is actually going into the Learn Center directly. So let me log, let me actually log out. It's actually didn't time out yet. So in the Learn Center, when you go, you can also log in directly to your Learn Center. So what you're seeing here is also accessible a click away in the in the student portal. But to go to your Learn Center, to go to class, you'll get this link and login credentials after you complete the new student onboarding uh, as well. So what you're seeing here is that you're given password for the Learn Center. And I click down your password, and this goes you directly into class. This is what class looks like. So this, when January 1st starts, you can access the Learn Center and have your classes listed here. Uh, so keep that in mind. You won't see your classes yet until January 1st, and they'll be listed in the drop down menu under My Courses, along with the Resource Center, Library Research Homepage, and the Writing Center. Okay. And then we'll, let's just show you what one of the classes looks like for our demo today. Oops, let's start. Let's start. I know we have a, a population of a variety of programs. So we're going to start with a bachelor's degree program. In the bachelor's degree program, this is actually the class you will be taking called ACE 100. We include the syllabus, there's instructor information, uh, course announcements, uh, Grammarly, and we're going to talk about the first assignment. So, uh, one note is that. Uh, you, for uh, ACE 100, for any course that you start here at CIU, what I'm scrolling down to is the student biography statement. So on the first day of class on January 1st, I know it's New Year's, so I don't want anybody to, to, to be stressed about this, but on the first day of class, which you will have access to, of course, on New Year's Day, you, you'll introduce yourself by clicking the student bio, and you're going to get credit for this as well. You scroll down and find the student bio that I roll scroll down to. This is in every classroom. Your student bio in a biography of some direction um, include, you know, at least three paragraphs. Uh, I, I mean, no more than three paragraphs, excuse me, um, where you have a brief description of your professional experience, academic experience, awards, honors, and as well, motivation and, as well, and assisting you as well to pursue the degree. What, what, how this course will assist you in any interesting fun facts. So this is a great way where you can post your bio, you can select add a new discussion, and then you have here your subject and your uh, uh, login screen as well. And like for example, you can put, let's say my name is Eddie Hernandez, you can just put Eddie Hernandez, bio as well, and type in your post. So you can say, you know, hello, my name is, and I am here for, whichever you wanna do. And then you press submit, and then it'll post here in the thread. So very, very simple. You know, this is the first assignment. All I have to do is talk about yourself and submit, and then you'll have, get credit for participating on the first day of class. Congratulations, you've done your first assignment here at CIU. So um, don't forget about doing that on the first day of class, and, uh, and you can even prepare it now. Um, some students dropped a bio that they want prepared to post on the first day. Once you do that, you're officially a CIU attending student. So let's go back to the class and go over a couple more things. Oh, and thank you. I see here Janet, Janet Bergeron just joined us. Thank you, uh, Janet. Thank you for joining us. Just saw your name pop up on our screen here, just in time. All right. All right, so let's continue. So as I scroll down, you'll see a few things beginning with the syllabus and orientation highlights. 
let's click on the syllabus. Every course has a syllabus, whether it be an undergraduate or a master's or doctorate level course, you will have a syllabus. Each syllabus is different depending on the course. It has your course requirements, the breakdown of each unit, rating and course assessment, credit hour definition, and your course schedule. All right. Let's see. And as you see here, um, you have the assignments broken down every week in every unit. So that is a syllabus. So you want to ensure on the first day of class to download uh, the syllabus as well. All right, so you have instructor information. So ensure that yeah, you do the instructor information so you can do their policies and their contact information. I'm sorry, actually, let me scroll back up. All right, scroll a little bit. I'll scroll too fast now. So another thing you're going to also have a resource is Grammarly. Grammarly is student login uh, as well. So this is a writing enhancement platform uh, as well. So this is uh, similar to like a plagiarism scanner, but you have access to Grammarly and it will utilize it for your for writing writing purposes. I utilize it myself. Uh, even have it embedded in my Microsoft Office, it's a very helpful tool. Some people, some of you may have seen this com a commercial from Gary on TV. It's a really popular tool as well, uh, Plagiarism Scanner. And as a CIU student, you will have access to a Grammarly account with a university email. All of you also, the CIU student, will get a university email as well once you've completed your new student onboarding uh, and talk, spoken to your advisor. In the user manual, additional resources listed here. So I scroll down, you'll see there are a variety of assignments um, broken down each unit. You see there's unit one exam, unit one mini writing assignment, and a practice exam as well. And you'll see the dates updated as well to reflect your term each unit. So I scroll back up. This is what ACE 100 is. This is your undergraduate class. Now, this class doesn't have an e-textbook. For undergraduates, associates and bachelor's degree or certificate programs, you're taking this class, you won't have an e-book for this particular class. You will in other classes. But all graduate level students and courses will have a, class, a book on their first day. So what you're looking at now is GRC 600. GRC 600 is the first class in your doctorate program. So very similar structure. The MBA is almost a very, very similar structure with orange and highlights, help forms, the syllabus, structure information. The big difference is for just this particular course, the textbook. So you'll have access to create a textbook on the first day of class. Here you go. Here's the uh, 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 screen, uh, actually the login screen for the textbook. And you'll create and send your email and create an account with Vital Source uh, as well on the first day of class. No additional charges. You'll have the ebook uh, as well, e textbook, excuse me, uh, available to be accessed for the duration of your term uh, as well. Um, some students prefer uh, a hardcover copy. We'll tell you a little bit more about that a little later. And uh, if you decide to purchase an ebook, that will also be an option if you want to keep it for the, your future time here at CAU. For example, in the DBA program, there are additional rubrics, essay templates as well. You still get a copy of Grammarly. And then you have unit one as well. Go down, you scroll down to unit one. And you have your activities here. A little different than your other course, in the ACE 100 course, but there's still a biography statement, videos, a little bit different, of course, assignments dealing with your start of your dissertation. So that is what a doctorate course looks like. The MBA course also has essays and a textbook as well. Graduate level courses, 
would have a very similar structure as well with the units broken down. All right, so let's now go over um, use student resources. Now that you know what the class looks like, let's see what we can, what resources are available to assist you. Let's begin with the Student Resource Center. So I went down to Student Resources, the drop down menu, and the Student Resource Center looks like this. You have news and features, there's a CIU handbook, student handbook, there's a book list. So if you ever want to look at your what textbooks you want uh, ahead of time, uh, based on your schedule, you can look them up and even purchase them off uh, the hardcover copy if you like. The book list is available and updated every term. Additional training videos with e, e textbook. A Verisite plagiarism scanner. Um, Verisite is uh, actually a very important tool. I talked about Grammarly earlier, and uh, it is a great tool uh, that you will not just be utilizing, um, you know, optionally. Verisite is a requirement if you're going to submit a writing assignment. Let me show you why. So I'm going to click the Verisite Plagiarism Scanner. So for those of you who may have been to an online university before or utilize a, a brick and mortar, gone to school and have a paper, of course, you understand how important not to be penalized for plagiarism for a paper, uh, especially if you look at APA format. So um, at, at CIU, um, that's, of course, a, a requirement, you know, as well. And uh, you want to ensure that you're able to submit a paper that's, you know, under a certain plagiarism percentage. At CIU, it's under 15%. So if you cited everything correctly and appropriately, then you've met the threshold for, uh, eight, eight for the plagiarism scanner. So you want to submit your assignment in this scanner. If it's a written assignment, like a research paper, anytime you do that, uh, you're going to want to submit it to Verisite first. Submit your paper in the plagiarism scanner so you can find out what you need to edit. Um, if it's above 15%, I could say this one right here above here was over 21. Um, so the student's probably fixing their Verisite scanner as well. You would select Submit to an Assignment, upload your file. And if you, well, I'm going to do that. Is it, the demo today, I want to be able to bring that up, but let me put browse file. So then you can upload your file here on the desktop, wherever you have it saved, and have it scanned. Okay, so that is the Verisite scanner. So it's really important. Uh, a couple things about the scanner is that your instructors also have access to the Verisite scanner. Once you submit an assignment, you submit it in the class. That's the final draft. And the final draft is what your instructor's grading. So if you don't, if you haven't uh, edited it, if you haven't submitted it in the plagiarism scanner, it's up to the instructor as to how to grade it. And if it's above 15%, there's plagiarism detected, then that's going to impact your grade uh, as well, of course. So you want to sure you would like to scanner first to find out well, how, what needs to be edited, if anything. Always use your tools like Grammarly, in particular Verisite, um, to to review and edit any research papers, any assignments that are written. That's absolutely necessary as a CIU student. Uh, and uh, Verisite is a great tool. I think a similar uh, platform that some students have utilized in the past. Uh, Turnitin is another example. Uh, but for you know, other, there's still so really important examples here. We have Grammarly, um, of course, additional help. Uh, but your instructors have access to Verisite. So I'm sure you like this tool effectively. All right. Other resources we have listed here is the Math Tutoring. We have, we have Math Tutoring Center. So what I have to do is uh, submit a request with our Math Tutor, Dr. Hess. And you can request a review here. Ensure to plan ahead if you need help with math. Um, make sure to you know make the request and be aware that the tutors will respond within 24 to 48 hours. So I know for some undergraduate students who are in a, uh, adding in algebra or as well, for example, you, know, you, may, you may want help. Or let's say you're in the doctorate or master's program, you're doing statistics or have some work on dissertation and there's some math problems or math, math issues, you know, some data you need to, need to review, you can use the math lab. Also, there's a writing center as well. 
Now, this one is a little bit more information. You know, many of you, if not in all the programs, at one point, you're going to complete written assignment um, in, the, in the APA style guide. APA stands for, I don't know if I mentioned this, American Psychological Association. Uh, so you want to ensure that um, you're familiar with the APA format and completing a paper that is um, following these guidelines. And, and for undergraduate students, or even some graduate students who have never, who have maybe not been familiar with APA, um, don't worry. It, each introductory class will, will, will actually help you be familiar, or at least refresh your memory. Like for example, the APA essay template, dissertation template. Very helpful information for writers here. And it's actually led by, whoops, I'm sorry, uh, Writing Center Chair and Director Beth Lee. And you know, some writers actually have uh, their, what they specialize in as well listed here. And you can make you can actually review her appointment calendar and make a request. One one advice I have as well with regarding requests is that you do those early in the week. Please notify 24 hours in advance. So you know if you're making a request and need help uh, as well, Sunday night before an assignment's due, that's not ideal. You want to make Plan ahead and, and, and uh, complete that beforehand and early in the week. So it's important you look at your assignments before, way before they're due early in the week. You have Sally Lazarus, also a writing tutor as well. And Dr. Hess as well. That is the writing center. A couple other things we're going to go over in the tutorial portion is the online library. Online um, library is actually different view, ways to view it. There's vendor view, which is very popular, uh, ProQuest, uh, Gale Cinegage as well, very well known. So if you ever ask, you know, in an assignment, you need to, to complete a research paper, make sure you use these databases. At ProQuest, you know where to go, the online library. In fact, the LEARN, uh, which actually stands for Library and Information Resources Network, but as you can tell, LEARN is a lot shorter and easier to say. Um, they actually have trainings, too. So there's not training just the month, but there are some in January. And then webinars actually. So learn actually have some great webinars too. As you can see here, there's one January 8th, January 12th. So as you come up with the program, you can sign up for webinars if you want more uh, training on how to conduct uh, research and, and, and accessing these databases. There's a lot, and especially in the graduate level, um, you know, you'll be being utilizing databases for your research. And there's different ways to research, but you know we want to ensure you have access to this, and we'll always have access to this as a CIU student. So I'm now going to go to lastly technical support. We're uh, midway, we're toward the end of the tutorial portion. So just lastly, I just selected technical support. Um, if you ever have a technical issue, and this is of course available in the website too, in case your technical issue is that you can't log in uh, as well to the Learn Center. Um, this is the actually help desk website, support at caluniversity.edu. So here's where you can open up a new ticket. Let's say, and let's first put in our email, type in the email, example. And then my full name, phone number, help to topic, be very precise if it's a Login issue, and sure to put that in. Uh, and then, of course, title again. And post the reasons here. My best advice when you want a temporal support ticket is ensure that you be as clear and concise. You can even provide screenshots, you know, and, and ensure, you know, that, you know, give you as much information as you can so we can find a solution and get back to you within 24 hours. Um, help desk tickets are this is always available. So even if it's late at night, and during the weekend, the sooner you provide a ticket, the sooner someone can look at it and get back to you when in the morning or the next day. You know, you don't want to ever hesitate. Think about thinking about should I do a ticket? If not, if you really don't know, have a don't know who what to do. You know, ensure to be be aware or or to at least submit for help. 
so we can uh, review this and uh, work together with IT department and another department to solve your issue. So going back to the Learn Center, we went over the courses, we went over the student portal, resources, online library, and technical support, all available in the Learn Center. Remember, when you complete new student onboarding, you will be getting login credentials to your portal, where you create your application and look at your grades and administrative information. Then you can also go directly to your Learn Center. And the Learn Center is key because that is where you're going to go to class. And just to note about the Learn Center, too, you, one thing I didn't mention earlier is it's asking you what time is it. So remember, uh, CIU, um, the official time zone for us, of course, is Pacific time zone. So plan accordingly because the due dates for assignments, our office hours as well, all reflect our time zone. So once, let's say, you log in, let's say you're in New York, you're three hours ahead. Um, right now, it's 5 o'clock here in California. So if you're in New York, you always know what time it is here, reflecting the faculty and our office hours. And it's actually exactly 5 o'clock right now, so about halfway through our presentation. Uh, so just be aware of that, you know, plan accordingly. And I tell each student when they start, uh, that, that that's one of the most important things that, and that to be aware of is to manage your time and ensure the due dates. And if you're a little nervous, it's okay. Um, contact your advisors who can assist you. Um, raise your hand, as you can say, in a virtual instance, that's instance of just, you know, give us a call, email, or text. We'll talk more about that as we continue the presentation. That's actually, now to conclude the tutorial part, I'm gonna go back to the PowerPoint as well. And we're gonna go back to the set section. And we're going to pause for a few moments to open up uh, the discussion. Um, are there any questions regarding our orientation so far or about the tutorial? We're about halfway through. I hope, you're, hope this is becoming very helpful. Uh, but go ahead. Please ask any questions. Use a microphone. Use a chat box. Like everybody's still here. Is there anybody that just joined us while I was presenting that would like to introduce yourself now? Let's see here, we still have for uh, Moise, uh, Tomer. Yeah, this is Moise. Oh, Moise, great. Thank you for speaking yes, I have, up. I have a question. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, at this time, I don't have a, a login yet on the portal that we had. Is it any time where we're going to have our <coughs> uh, login and password? Yes, Moise. Uh, I emailed that to you yesterday. Um, I personally saw the email go out late last night after we spoke. Uh, so after the presentation, check your email uh, and, and please let me know if you did not receive it. Let me know so I can resend that. Uh, it would have come from myself and, and CIU orientation. Yes, I was able to log in using the the first uh, initial or my first name and the Two first letters on my last name. I will, I logged in and then the second screen, I wasn't able to log in. Is that normal? So were you able to log in to the student portal first or the learn center? I log on the student uh, portal, the learning, the, learn, the learning center. I was able to see the learning center. And then okay. the, the other logging, I was not able to log in on that one. Mm, okay, I think, well, the, the student portal um, is actually the one that you can log in uh, first and then the Learn Center second as the, as the start date approaches. Uh, so uh, let me know after presentation. You can email me what you see on your screen. The you student portal should work. Uh, that's actually where you did the application. The Learn Center doesn't uh, officially uh, launch until you start your call. Okay. You may not see everything in the Learn Center yet, but let me know and send me a screenshot after today or an email and double check as well. Okay, I will do that. All right. Yeah, no problem. That goes for everybody as well. If, if, if you've been trying to log in and you find yourself unable to, to log in, uh, as well with the country provided, or maybe one works and one doesn't. They're almost exactly the same unless you've changed it. Um, let me know. Just send us an email and we can, you know, reset that password for you or double check. 
because yeah. the learning center for those students who are either just been enrolled or enrolling, you may not have actually learned center yet uh, as well. And everybody will have that available on the first as well. Okay. Like classes don't pop up until the first. Just to mm -hmm. clear. That's a good question though. Let us know if we have any questions. Are there any additional questions? No, I just wanted to know. Uh, um, anyway, I will uh, try to log again on on my on that uh, portal. The portal is the one that's giving me her time, and I will let you know after this if I still have a problem. But it should be the same password and the same uh, username, right? Yes, yes, it is. But if, if it's not working, let me know, and I'll I'll reset that for you, Moise. No problem. Okay. Good. Thank you. All right, so we're going to go ahead and, and continue on with the next presentation. Well, I'm sure we finish on time, around 5.30. <coughs> All right. So we're going to go to the Fed section and talk about technology requirements. So one thing that's very, very important is uh, having a reliable internet connection. I can't stress that enough. Um, for those of you who went through Newfoundland onboarding and the North Cross, is, how critical it is to ensure that you have internet and you have a in your recommended browser is Google Chrome uh, as well. Uh, and so that's what our CIU students tell us, uh, myself, and the other advisor, David Rodriguez, we use Google Chrome uh, daily here. Uh, the other the browsers also are accessible, uh, like Microsoft, uh, just not Microsoft, Microsoft Explorer. And we'll do the Firefox, but that's what we recommend. And I can't stress enough that you ensure that you have internet connection. If uh, right now you may not, or you're, you're working on it, or, or there's a factor in you having access to the internet, please let us know. We want you to start successfully. That's you know, absolutely necessary to start school. You want to have these applications too, uh, Microsoft Word, Excel, and PowerPoint. In fact, with the university email you're receiving, you'll get a, a a cop, not a copy, but you'll get a version of Microsoft Office for you. You can have these applications if you, in case you don't already have it. You're going to have Adobe Acrobat Reader, PDF, um, a webcam and microphone uh, as well uh, is, is, is necessary. I know that's built into some laptops and computers now, the newer computers. Uh, I remember when you used to have the whole, you know, big old thing on top of your screen to get a microphone. And, you know, fall off on your desk, but um, ensure you have something, you know, that you can utilize uh, as well, because in some, some exams um, and in some CCA exams or comprehensive exams at the doctor level, they are proctored. Um, so uh, that's something to ensure that you have a soon, um, not for the first class, but soon, so you can utilize those, those applications for any proctored exams future, in future courses. And remember, if any of these things don't work or you have any issues, contact technical support. Hopefully it will work, but if you ever need help, contact technical support. And with that being said, I want to stress the importance of identifying a study place. A place that's free of distraction, little or no background noise, reliable uh, power, source, power source, uncluttered. And the really most important thing is find a place that works best for you and stick to it. Uh, as well. So um, as you get started, you know, a lot of a lot of students have a computer, have internet. They have a place, they know they're going to go to school, but they don't have a place where they can concentrate. So it, it, I, I really do stress that. We really want you to be comfortable, but also be able to concentrate. And so um, think about that as term one, January 1st begins. Maybe it's, a, maybe it's a room in your house, an office, Starbucks, or a local, you know, local coffee shop. Whatever works best for you, think about that as you start your class. Remember, for sure, it has a reliable internet source, reliable power source. Course registration. There are eight terms, courses in a year. Each term is six weeks. During the first week of the term, you're able to adjust your schedule by adding and dropping a course. So please contact your student service advisor for any possible changes to your schedule before or during week one. All schedule changes must be done prior and during week one pre-university policy. So keep that in mind. 
uh, as well in, in, in the future as you complete courses is that your schedule may be updated. Um, it, may, it may want it to be updated uh, as well. So ensure that if something happens, um, you realize that you know, there's going to be some kind of change in your life or work schedule that's impacting your schedule here, contact us. You know, ideally, you don't want to drop a course. You understand that. And maybe, you need, maybe something happens. You know, and so contact us. The sooner you let us know about something that's going to impact you and your status here, contact us. We can find a solution. Even if you're unsure, contact us. We want to know how we can help you. And then also, just a note here, I, I mentioned here there are eight terms in a year, and each term is six weeks. That goes for every program at every level. Every class is six weeks long. And in a whole year, all of you beginning January 1st, from January 1st to the next, for the next year in 2019, um, you have eight classes in a year. For more detailed information, I always review our catalog as well. So that concludes the set section. We're one section away from completing the orientation. But I want to now, once again, uh, go over if there are any questions. And please use the chat box for any questions as well. There's Moise again. I'm sorry, what was your name? There's Moise again. Hmm. Moise. Okay, Moise. Yes. Yes. Uh, now, uh, talking about technology, uh, mm -hmm. how is uh, the Mac uh, Mac work with this technology? Do we need to have Windows or we can have a Mac? Oh, that's a good question. Um, both. Both. Um, so I mentioned Microsoft Office. I know it's a very, very popular tool. It is compatible with Mac. I do. I have it on my Mac, too. Uh, so that's a good question. Uh, I use a Mac and I use a, a Windows. I use Windows in the office. I use a Mac too. Both are fine. Whatever your preference is, uh, as well. That's a good question. So don't. You, it is compatible with both. I haven't seen much issues, if any, with utilizing either. It's just kind of a preference. Like everybody <laughs> has a preference between Mac and Windows. Uh, so you, and if you do encounter one issue with one computer and one with not with the other, let us know. So we can find out what that is. Good okay. question. Okay, Good question. Thank you. Uh, uh, this is questions? Josh Harmon. Yeah, great, Josh. Go ahead. Uh, so we do not have to have a Mac, right? Because that's like sacrilegious to me. <laughs> <laughs> no, you don't. Absolutely. I know what you mean. Okay. Some people have their preferences. Um, I'm okay with both, but. Um, yeah, we want to. This is open to everybody across the globe. Our program, so mm -hmm. whatever you prefer, you know that's, that's the preference. I know. I, I know. When I bought at Microsoft Office, but it's compatible with both. I have it for both, and it's just a uh, really great tool. Right. Okay. Are there any additional questions before we move forward? Okay, um, and uh, just one more roll call as well. I want to ensure everybody is able to, and if, if please, if you haven't introduced yourself, please do so because an orientation is a requirement. If you want to email your enrollment advisor or use the chat box, please do so. Um, but thank you again for Farid Ahmed for joining us uh, as well. Uh, Moise, Moise, thank you again. Tomer, uh, Latanya Hardin, Mecca Mitchell, Joshua Harmon, Megan Mills, and Janet Bergeron. So once again, if you do not hear your name, please speak up. If you're only dialed in on your phone, please speak up uh, before we continue and include our, or our presentation today. We have another orientation tomorrow uh, as well. So if you need to leave early um, before we conclude for today, um, it's understandable. We are getting a recording as well, um, but uh, just to let you know in case you haven't woke up and want to still hear what I have to say. <laughs> All right, let's move on to the next section. All right, attendance. So attendance is very, very important. Uh, it, with it being online, it's critical that you're submitting your assignments on time and weekly. 
is participating in completion of weekly units uh, are required in your course. There's, uh, excuse me, participation in completion of your weekly units are required in your courses. And that goes for every program level. Ensure to submit your biography statement on the first list class. We talked about that. And remember, non-participation in week one will result in cancellation. Uh, unit assignments are due for completion Sunday of each week by 11.55 Pacific time. So think about that for a second. It's, it's 11.30 at night, you haven't submitted your assignment. You, you don't want to plan on doing that. It's sure to plan ahead. Submit them as early as you feasibly can so you can work with your instructor. And also, I mentioned about cancellation. Understandably, everybody here doesn't want to cancel. But if something happens that you know changes your participation, please let us know. We'll be contacting you, especially if there's an issue with you attempting to log in. We want to help you, so please let us know if you have any issues in logging in. So if you don't, if students not post in the first week of class, if you're a new student, the program's canceled for the no show. So let us know; we can do to help you. Uh, students, once you start the program, if you don't attend class for 14 day, consecutive days, you will be withdrawn. So also keep that in mind as you start the program. Uh, we will be reaching out to you every week if you do not attend, you know, to offer our assistance as with instructors. So if you get an email, a phone call from us as well, please let us know. And of course, if you have any login questions, contact your student service advisor. That's the main thing. If you have any login questions, uh, we want to we, we want to help you as soon as possible. Don't be scared to contact us. Don't be nervous. We're here to help you. One item I want to also uh, bring your attention that we're, we'll have access to is um, our intelligent partnership. Uh, Pocket Confidant AI and ourselves, CIU, have joined forces uh, to complete a unique partnership, um, which is to build the future of digital education and boost student engagement and achievement. Um, so we pot we've partnered with Pocket Confidant, and it's a virtual coaching tool to all students, faculty, and staff. I myself am utilizing it uh, recently, and it's very helpful, an exciting tool we want to offer. Uh, we are offering our students. It's a self coaching system that helps with individual. Uh, step back, reflect, and become more aware of the situation to facilitate conversations for personal performance. Um, so once you start the program, amid the term, you'll gain access to Pocket Confidant. You learn more about Pocket Confidant in your courses and it's an exciting new tool. More information is forthcoming, but once you see the confidence PowerPoint, uh, you will be able to read more about Pocket Confidant and there's a blog with more details. Um, I actually have a representative from Pocket Confidant here today that may have a few words. Uh, as well um, to our new students. Uh, hi, my name is Isla Redden, and I'm one of the founders of Pocket Confidence. Uh, welcome. I've really enjoyed listening to your uh, orientation in the last 30 minutes. Um, and I just want to say that we created this tool to help all students be able to feel more supportive in their journey and. Uh, we look forward to working with you during your journey here at CIU. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. If you're learning more about Pog Compact, uh, we actually met today, uh, discuss further details to help you and how we can best utilize this exciting application uh, for you as a student. So that more relations forthcoming is really excited. You saw all the other tools presented to you uh, as well to help you be help everybody be successful. All right. So assistance and support, excuse me. So a couple of things I did actually not mention earlier. My name again is Eduardo Hernandez. Just go by Eddie and <laughs> call me Eddie. And I'm the advisor for, for students the last names A through K. So some of you have spoken to me before uh, as well. Already um, and I'm the new student onboarding. Some of you are coming, returning to CIU this term and I'm so happy that you're all, you're back. <laughs> Uh, David Rodriguez um, has probably spoken to you if your last name starts with an L through Z. Um, our hours are a little different. Mine is 8 to 5. The specific time is 7.30 to 4.30. But so there will always be somebody here until 5 o'clock when the university closes. You can call us. You can text message us. You can email us. You can Skype us. Whatever you prefer, 
Um, usually we do call and email you if there's a certain issue or uh, information we provide to you, good or bad, we want to contact you. So please be aware of that and follow up with us. We are reaching out to you and we'll reach out to you and respond within 24 hours. The Student Service Department here is, is committed to providing you with the highest level of support while you strive to reach your academic goals. Assistance and support. All right, so as I mentioned, we have, just a reminder of the Writing Center and the Math Lab. Study partners. So as we, as we continue with the, as we get closer to starting the program, um, I could, there really is a lot of great uh, support that I'm sure you're going to be having from family and friends. And we really do look forward to providing quality on education that you value for your family and friends uh, as well and a lot of benefits to having somebody study with you. So, for example, sharing ideas, accountability, it builds confidence, additional support, gain new perspectives and learning new study skills. So you have a great benefit. So I'm sure many of you have brought to the attention to a family member, a coworker, a good friend that you're going to school online. Uh, I can tell you stories and stories of graduates, uh, husband and wife, uh, a lot of best friends and coworkers, and father and son actually, who are who graduate together, even at different program levels. That's an I mean it is it's excellent, it's so exciting. Um, when you're going to school online, you, you know you're not going to the classroom talking to anybody, you know directly, but you know having somebody there online with you that you can speak offline to, that's really really helpful, and it's always um, benefiting you and, and your partner. Uh, and in fact, we've got you know, a group of friends who are together and coworkers doing successful, so it's really helpful. And we are still accepting applications for the upcoming term, January 1st. Uh, yourself and your colleagues can contact us directly in the Student Affairs. Uh, and if you have a different start date, for example, we want to help everybody go to school online. CIU School ID. So remember, as a CIU student, you will get an ID after the completion of your first course. It looks just like this. Remember, you can um, you have the option of sending us a uh, student an ID card uh, picture uh, as well. You can email that to us uh, on the student portal and uh, send us a picture with a white background, preferably professional picture. Remember, this is something that you are going to be utilizing professionally uh, and every day in the school. Um, so good example is what you see here. Um, so submit your request in the student portal or email us as well. Get your ID, get your discounts at the movie theater, discounts uh, for public transportation, whatever you prefer um, as well. You're a full-time student, so you get your ID and utilize it the best, whatever way you want. So your pride at CIU. We're excited to give that to you as soon as you finish your first class. Ready, set, go. You completed uh, the ready uh, each section and now to conclude our orientation we're ending promptly at the 4 5 30 i want to ensure to give everybody the opportunity to ask any questions oh thank you tomer have a great night you too and tomer uh i will also be following up with you probably tomorrow give me a call tomorrow i'd like to follow up with you have a great night excellent what is our username, Eddie? Asked Farid Ahmed. So your username, Farid, was emailed to you if you completed uh, onboarding uh, as well. It was emailed to you uh, as well. I believe, Farid, we completed that. So if you didn't get the email, let me know. And that goes for everybody. If you look through email after speaking to me, you couldn't find it uh, as well. Um, don't worry. Don't, don't panic. Uh, email me back, and I can just forward that to you. That goes for everybody. Thanks, Eddie. Yeah, I'm going to email you right after this orientation. Sure thing, absolutely. Welcome, Latanya, and happy holidays, to everybody. I'll be leaving the office uh, uh, after today at 5:30, but I'll be in the office 8 to 5 p.m. as well. If anybody wants to speak offline, so shortly after our presentation, uh, university offices will be closed. But right now, we still have a couple more minutes for questions. Thank you, Joshua. And also, um, we'll be sending a recording, a copy of the recording in PowerPoint as well, um, very soon, probably by tomorrow. 
Uh, so don't worry. You'll get all the, the you'll get all the support and everything ready for you before January 1st. Um, we'll be offices will be closed on Monday, uh, but our departments will be back open on Tuesday through Friday, of course. Okay, sounds good. What's that? I'm sorry. I said okay. Sounds good. Okay, sounds great. All right, thank you. All right, are there any additional questions? All right, well, I'm going to conclude for the day. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. And have a great day. I'm signing off for the day, and I'm leaving for the day as well. Offices will be closing here at CIU shortly. Have a good evening, everybody.